Okay, welcome Gwen Leppard to our Conscious Leader Circle. As a luminary, Gwen Leppard shines the way to empower empathic entrepreneurs to evolve beyond limitations. Having triumphed over narcissistic and energy bully abuse, she elevates empaths to overcome their relationship baggage, optimize their self-love, and own their personal power, obliterating anxiety on the way. I love that. Uh, she has co-authored five books, including the award-winning international bestseller, Navigating the Clickety-Clack, Volume 2, with Joe Vitale and Marie Diamond from the hit movie The Secret. She's appeared on numerous telesummits and podcasts, including You Wealth Revolution, From Heartache to Joy, The Transformation Show, The Light Warrior in Scientific Healing radio shows, and was recently featured on the MSP network in a live television interview. Gwen Leppard is the creator of the Leppard Method Certification Program, a baggage begone facilitator, speaker, and author. She has tool shed, um, she has a tool shed of healing modalities and processes, including energy medicine, decrees, hypnotherapy, NLP, quantum jumping, and many more. When she's not helping release relationship residue, removing energetic shackles and clearing emotional baggage, you can find her dancing. And Gwen is a phenomenal dancer. When Gwen dances, the whole world lights up. I know that. Uh, walking in the mountains, or by the ocean and creating healthy, gluten-free, dairy-free, plant-based, whole foods and treats. Well, that is a magnificent um, uh, life experience. So welcome, Gwen Leppard. We're so honored to have you with us here today. Oh, Lydia, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm just so honored to be here. And I just want to say hi to everybody. So, so Stephanie and Richard and Cheryl, Jennifer, Kathy, Francis, Ian, Martin. Martin, I remember meeting you when, um, for, during the Navigating the Clickety Clack launch. Uh, Marianne, uh, Judith, Janet, so glad to hear, have you here, Yana. And mm -hmm. uh, it looks like uh, we've got more people joining us. Carol just joined us and, um, and someone whose name I would mispronounce. So. I will, I will wait on, on saying hi to that. Today, I want to share with you my anxiety buster, the ABC anxiety buster. And the reason why I share this is, well, first, I, I want to share with you that if you join in participation, like putting chat, let's grab the chat. So putting information in the chat, answers to questions in the chat, and that will be your participation. So the reason why I wanted to share this with you is because there is a huge increase in anxiety, a 93% increase in anxiety happened from January, uh, January to September 2020 over 2019. So of course, we don't talk about what caused that increase. And yet, the fact is, anxiety on the planet is 93% higher than it used to be. So I want to go back to this participation. So when you're just sitting here listening, that's really awesome. You, you retain about 50% of what I'm sharing. And I'm sharing a really powerful tool for you for to clear anxiety so that you can have more calm, confidence, and clarity. So if you participate by putting in responses, thumbs up, whatever you would like in the chat, that brings your participation up to 95 to even 99% of retention, which is really super awesome because, you know, most of us don't have time to go back and watch things again. And if you do have time, that's awesome too, because it gives you even more retention. So what is anxiety? Anxiety is fear, worry, concern about the future. So everyone's concerned about the future right now. And we're focused on the future rather than being focused on the present. And if we could get everyone to mute, that would be really amazing. Thank you so much. One of the questions that, that empaths, highly sensitive people, introverts um, do is go into the imposter syndrome really fast. It's like, who am I to write a book? Who am I to be part of an amazing book with amazing luminaries who the world knows? Who am I to be a healer? Who am I to run this amazing group? Who am I to 
do the things that I've always wanted to do. And people say, well, who are you to do that? So as empaths, highly sensitive individuals, introverts, we play that imposter syndrome. And that brings anxiety as well. And it also paralyzes action. That creates procrastination. One of my favorite things. I use procrast procrastination to get other things done. How about you? <laughs> And Jennifer, thanks for saying hi to all. Jennifer has started part the participation. You can say hi. Actually, let's find out. I, I know your names from, from the Zoom windows. However, what I would love is to have where you're from. So why doesn't everybody go ahead and put in the chat your, your um, first name, where you're from, and if you'd like for extra points, what you'd like to get out of today. That would be really awesome. And while you're doing that, and we're getting you in action already, I'm going to have a little water. And this is actually one of my cobalt blue bottles. This one has um, Be the Change with a Phoenix on it. I don't know if you can see that. And so I drink my water out of cobalt blue. And I got that from Joe Vitale back in 2004. Mm, water is so important. Ah, OK. Oh, I see your names and you're telling me where you're from. Awesome. So we have people in Toronto. Uh, Coast Hat. Oh, I'm going to mispronounce it. That's one of the things I'd like, I'd really like to change. I would like to be able to pronounce things better. The Niagara region in Ontario. Um, gratitude. Barry, born in Denmark. Fit the description. Empath, introvert, highly sensitive. Yay. So glad that you're here, Yana. And Hills, Hillsburg, Ontario, Newcastle. Sudbury. Awesome. I'm from, I'm from Montana and I'm living in San Diego. We have someone from Ireland. Welcome. Welcome. Jennifer in Michigan. Yes. You want to get more information on controlling anxiety. Extra points for Jennifer. Not that we're play, not that we're counting, but here's some quotes that have been really impactful for me around anxiety. So years ago, I heard action is the antidote to despair. And I was in such deep despair. And when I saw that this was Joan Baez, it took me back to my teenage years. And I went, oh my gosh, Joan Baez knew how to get us out of despair, get into action. And so I stopped my procrastination. I started getting into more action. And I ended up leaving a situation that was draining my energy, my finances, basically my life. And shortly thereafter, I got introduced um, to... The wellness leadership, which is where I met Lydia. And recently I heard the quote, action absorbs anxiety. And I'm like, yay, all right, they put it in palette. They, they've got the alliteration. And this was from Tyler Norton, who's the founder of a wellness company, which of course we love because it's wellness, which led me to the quote, answers alleviate anxiety. So my own quote, the reason why you'll see soon. So the ABC, actually, let's talk about that just for a moment. So answers, so some people say, okay, well, you get answers and maybe that makes you, that makes things worse because maybe you don't like the answers. But this tool that I'm going to give you, one, it's going to alleviate anxiety. You can use it to relieve anxiety, but you can also use it to get answers. So it is like a two-pronged tool. We, so we ask a couple of different answers. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you now. So the ABC Anxiety Buster is three simple steps to manage anxiety, maintain your energy, and make life just more enjoyable. Who would like that? Who would like to have a more enjoyable life? All right, we've got hand raises. Excellent. Yeah, who would like a more enjoyable life? Let's see how many hands can we have here. Awesome, awesome. Excellent. And more people coming in from, Ian coming in from Ontario. Excellent. Yay. Carol's got a yep. All right, let's keep the the participation going. So what are the three simple steps? Ask, you get answers, right? The breath ball and call. So the ABCs are ask, breathe, or breath ball or ball and call. Number one, we wanna ask better questions. How often do you ask this one? Why, why is this happening to me? Show of hands, how many, how many people have done this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why is this happening? Why did this happen to me? Why did that person do this? Why is the world the way it is? So why is 
mm, there's things about the there's things about why why is actually for those of us that are sensitive or that have been victims of abuse of any kind why keeps us in victimhood now if you want to know why the earth goes around the sun and you want to research that that's a good why <laughs> but asking why someone did something is just a rabbit hole that will never get you out of that and will keep you in a victim state for a, as long as you keep asking it. And the moment that I realized I didn't need to know why I was the way I was or why anything had happened to me was the moment that my abilities to heal myself and others just took an exponential leap. Because all of a sudden I had so many more abilities because I stopped asking why. Ah, and again, the muting, the muting is good. So one of the first questions to ask, so this is, you know, we're, there are a lot of highly sensitive people here, empaths, introverts. The number one question to ask is, is this mine? We take on, we feel sometimes without even knowing some, a lot of people are empaths and don't even know they are. And they're feeling just so weighed down with all of the things that are going on in the world with their neighbors. Um, I came from Montana, which was so quiet in comparison to San Diego. And I had to go back to Montana because the weight of the people around me and I didn't have the tools to deal with it. And when I first came back, I had the tools, but I was still like, there's just too many voices. There's too many emotions. There's too much, too much humanity all around me. And luckily, there's also an ocean, which allows me to get into nature. And that helps alleviate some of that craziness. And I develop tools. So is this mine? You can ask that question. So in fact, let's, let's start with that one. So is this mine will allow you to determine yes, no. So then you need to know, do you have a good yes, no? Do you have a way of determining what's yes and what's no? So there are some easy ways um, using your body as a pendulum and you need to make sure that you're hydrated and that you are uh, forward, that you're not reversed, that sometimes your polarity is reversed. And I bet Lydia can help you help us with that soon. <laughs> and uh, the, so the yes would be forward and the no would be backwards. There's also ways with your fingers. I, I love this one. So yes, it holds for me, no slips. And some, some of this you know, takes practice to, to do it. I used to do this one, yes, no. And, and then I had to do, I chose to do readings for over 700 people and I lost the ability to use my hands because I was using these muscles um, so much that I couldn't type anymore and I needed to type. So I, then I switched to this one and I can use the other hand as well. So that's one of my favorite ones. You do the forward backward things for checking around food and other questions. Wonderful, Yana, wonderful. Yes, it's very helpful. You can do it. It can be very subtle in the, in the grocery aisle. Yeah. And, and that's, so that's, that's very helpful. So if you say, is this mine? And you get a yes, that gives you that information. If you say, is this mine? And it's no, it's like, oh, good. This is not mine. So I'm going to be able to you know, deal with it. And you can deal with it in the same way. But if it's yours, there's going to be some other pieces that maybe you might want to um, get some support on with people like Lydia or myself. So what are the questions that will lead you to an ideal solution now is Another great question to be asking once you ask, is this mine and discover whether or not it is. And what's most important for me to know right now? So if you're asking, is this mine? It's like, who have I been around? Is someone hooked into me? Who will I be seeing or talking to soon? And these are really important questions to ask if, if it isn't yours. It's like, yeah, this really doesn't feel like mine. Well, who have I been around? You know, is somebody hooked into me? Have you driven past? Have you driven past a house that maybe something's going on? That that was actually one of the reasons I left San Diego. There was this house. Every time I drove past it, I just knew something bad was happening there. And now I can drive by that house, and I don't have a problem. But that was twenty plus 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 years ago. So, and who will be talking to soon with my clients? There are times where I'm feeling great, and I know that I've got somebody coming in about fifteen minutes before I. Start. 
oh, I'm getting a headache. My shoulders start aching. My body's just not feeling right. I'm like, what is going on? And it's like, oh, I bet. And sure enough, my client is feeling that. So we clear it and then both of us feel better. So the breath ball is our next step. So we've been asking great questions and now we're going to go into the breath ball. So the breath ball, you'd think you would ground and center first, yes? Actually, oftentimes you, if you're off center, getting those three easy breaths will ground and center you. And there is a difference between the three easy breaths and the three deep breaths. And this, um, our publisher for navigating the clickety clack, Keith Leon, shared this with me recently. He, I was, I was spinning out, and he said, "Why don't you just go take three easy breaths and ask the question? You know, ask the question, take three easy breaths, and wait for the answer." And I did, and. So actually, why don't, well, here's part of the participation. So everyone take a deep breath. And notice what happens in your body. And out. And go ahead and look at my body when I take a deep breath. You notice that too, that it's like upper body. You know, even if you're doing a deep breath, your upper body's kind of efforting. Now go ahead and take an easy breath. So notice what's different in my body. Notice what's different in your body. Take another easy breath in. So did I have to tell you how and give you directions how to do an easy breath? Anyone in the chat? Did anyone need instructions on how to take an easy breath? Yeah, Lydia's saying no. Anyone in the chat? Yeah. Your body knows how to take an easy breath. The diaphragm expands out, your, your rib cages, your rib cage ex, ex, um, releases out, opens, expands, and the air just comes in. So start with three easy, three easy breaths. Then we center and ground, bringing your awareness to your grounding cord, which we all have. And if you're not familiar with the grounding cord, but I think that if you're here, you probably are. Um, but having a grounding cord. Um, so whatever's troubling you, put into a ball and then throw it down your grounding cord and it will be converted into pure energy. So you, if it's, this is not mine, you can create a ball of all the things that are not yours and throw them down your grounding cord. And if it is yours and it's troubling you, go ahead and see if it'll, if putting it in the ball and throwing it down, we'll, we'll clear it for you for now. Sometimes there's other pieces, deeper stuff that you need to work on and it might actually clear exactly what's troubling you for now. The call, the C, so we, we did the, the ask, we ask better questions, we do the breath ball, and then we call. So I want you to call in the knowing that you're incredibly powerful and decide what you want to call in instead. So call in calm, courage, confidence. What would you like to call in? Call in connection, peace, hope, being present. present. A lot of my clients like to call in freedom. So those are our three simple steps. Ask, breath ball, call. Do we have time to do it together? Can we do it together? Yes, yes, awesome, awesome. Yay! <laughs> it doesn't take much to, to, to entertain me. I get so excited. Okay. So I ask you to just be with yourself. So you don't have to set up anything to do the ask because you may be in you know this is this is a tool that you may be in this ah it's like wait a minute is this mine what were the other questions let's start with just the easy one is this mine so anything that you might have been feeling go ahead and tap in and ask is this mine and i know that we're recording this so you can come back and do it again and I can include the, I can include the slides as well for, for people, so for your group, so that they can have this to do. So is this mine? If you're getting a no, go ahead and bring up your, your breath ball. And start with those three easy breaths.
Notice that you are grounded and centered with your grounding cord going down from the base of your spine into the center of the planet. Whatever is troubling you, put it into that ball. I like to make the image of the ball with my hands. You can make it in your mind. Um, if you're kinesthetic, you're going to want to have some physical piece to it. And now that it's in the ball, throw it down your grounding cord to be converted into pure energy. Pure energy for your life. What do you want to call in? We're calling in that you're incredibly powerful. We're calling in calm, courage, confidence. We're calling in connection, peace, hope, presence, being present, freedom. What do you want to call in? And you can put in the chat when we're done here what you called in. So as it's called in, notice how different your level of anxiety is. In fact, we didn't even ask that. What was your anxiety to start with and what is it now? So those are some things that you could put into the chat as you start coming back to now. And recognizing how simple and quick this process is. And where else can you use this? So oh, coming back, coming back, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And go ahead and put some comments and questions in the, the chat while I share some results. So Philemon said when she first connected with, with me, she was due to travel to her home and she was experiencing so much fear and anxiety. There was a narcissist in her home and they always acted out when she was around and it, and it really caused her a lot of anxiety. So she worked with me. I helped her through um, one of my processes and she said it was unbelievable the lightness that she felt that night and a transformation that was quick and real. And she hasn't had the anxiety about the issue since. And I um, have kept in touch with her over the years and she's still doing, having anxiety around different things, but now she has the tools to deal with it. And that particular issue is, she doesn't deal with it anymore. It's, it's gone, all gone. Here's someone that we both know, Dr. Karen Can, doctor of light medicine, founder of the Topican Healing Method. She's why I know Lydia, why I know the wellness people, why, why I know Keith, uh, Leon. And she says that she had instant feelings of peace and lightness. So she had the pleasure of having me on her light radio warrior sh show, light warrior sh radio show. And the pleasure was mine. Um, that really incredible people through that show. And she said that she knew beforehand that I was amazing radiant relationship mentor. Thank you. Um, and coach, but she was absolutely blown away by my intuitive ability to do precise, accurate readings and mini clearings for herself and her readings. And she didn't even realize she'd been married to a narcissist before we worked together. So she felt that there were, that the, the whole show was lighter, peaceful, and that there were tears of joy. And people were saying that in the, in the chat, um, that we that we did so so janet your relationship was at an eight with anxiety and now at a three that is wonderful anyone else have any results or questions that they would like to ask about the abc anxiety buster the ask breath ball and call did the breathing into the ball again put it into the part of the body that felt depleted wonderful wonderful so what did you call into the ball when you put it back into your the part of your body that felt depleted. That's why we do the call. So and not just clearing, that we call in what we want. So we clear as well. So we ask, we clear by putting it in the, in the ball. Freedom, perfect. And then we call in what we want. Because when we remove things, we create a vacuum. And I, I, the question that I get often, people say, the, I, I cut the cords and the cords came back. And it's like, the cords you cut are gone. But we are energy beings and we bump around wanting to, to connect. That's as energy beings, we want connection more than anything else. And we're constantly reaching out energetically and others are reaching out to us energetically and we receive, they receive. And sometimes we're just a spaghetti, bowl of spaghetti of different connections. And the ones we cut are gone. 
and the new ones. We either bring in new ones or we're able to get into the deeper ones. So the other attachments and shackles and obligations that are uh, part of our everyday life. I'm so glad it felt good, Carol. So um, Yada brought in peace and freedom. Fabulous. So every fourth Thursday on the Radiant Relationship Revolution Facebook page, I do a release relationship residue mini monthly clearings. Now, this month, of course, we have Thanksgiving here in the States um, on Thursday. So I'm doing it this Tuesday. So on the 23rd, it's very, very soon. Um, and it's going to be an hour and we're talking about obligations. So we're, we're, we're clearing the energy of obligations because this time of year we I mean the holidays there are people that you're obligated to go and see that causes anxiety there are people that you're going to see that you haven't seen in a long time that trigger you that causes anxiety so not only will we be doing the clearings which are all complimentary here at the, the radiant relationship revelation facebook page and i'll, I'll put the link um and uh, of all this information in the chat and then i you'll be able to save the chat um so that you can have that information with your um, on your computer or your phone, and you know I'll be giving you tools to deal with clearing obligations as well. That we'll we'll be doing an obligation clearing as as well as any clearing any clearing requests. So people get to put in um, if if you go to Radiant Relationship Revolution and and follow or like likes are better than follows. <laughs> FYI. Uh, and underneath the, this picture that you'll see there, put in the clearing requests that you have, and we'll get to those during the, the clearing on Tuesday. So let me go ahead and put that information in. Actually, I'm, let's start with the link. So, instead of, so I'm gonna do it individually, and then I'm gonna do the whole thing. So there's the link to the Facebook page. If you want to reach out, if you have any questions or comments that you didn't want to put in here, you want to talk with me about going any further and what I offer, being part of my, my communities, um, support at GwenLeopard.com is a good way to do that. The clearings for, for um, the one that we're doing on Tuesday, here's the information on that. So Tuesday. November 23rd, live at 4 p.m. That's 7 Eastern. I think most of you are Eastern. And it'll be here in the Radiant Relationship Revolution. So look for the live. So that is 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 Eastern, 11 a.m. on Wednesday in Melbourne and Sydney, our, all of our, our wellness friends in, in Australia. And it's 5.30 a.m. in India. I have a, a lot of uh, people in my community from India as well. So Maybe you know someone in one of those areas. So now I'm going to just put the whole thing in here so that you can have it in one chat. And if you go to the to the far right of the chat, there are three little buttons. There's like a a, pay, a page, a, a, a smiley, and then the three buttons. And if you right click that, oh, maybe maybe you don't have it set up. Typically, if you write, oh yeah, right click that and uh, it'll come up save chat. And then you can save chat so you can have that information on your computer or your phone. I'm not sure if it does it on the phone, but on your computer, you can have it. And then you can go, where, where was that again? How do I get there? How do I get to that, that relationship, resi relationship residue, release relationship residue, mini clearings every, th every Thursday? <laughs> not every Thursday. Hmm. Maybe they will become every Thursday at this time, the fourth Thursday of every month. This has been the ABC Anxiety Buster. I am Gwen Leopard, a guide by the side and radiant relationship luminary. And here again is my contact information if you want to take a screenshot of that. So go ahead and like Radiant Relationship Revolution on Facebook and my best email to get me or one of my team members is support at GwenLeopard.com. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Sherwood. Sherwood came. Hi, Sherwood. It's so wonderful to see you or, or see your Hello, name. Hi. How are you, my dearest? I'm you well. Oh my gosh. It's so great to see you. Yes, well, I'm yes, going to yes. take 
Yay, yay. Um, did anybody have any questions that they wanted to bring in outside of the chat? I guess everyone's muted. Richard, you just popped on. You had a question for me? Nope. Okay. Lydia, I re return it to you. Well, thank you, Gwen. That was really phenomenal. And I love your process that you shared with us. Um, the tools are exactly what we talk about in our conscious leader circle to be grounded, energized, and focused um, during these challenging times so that we can be centered uh, within our core energy, uh, connected to our power, and conscious of what we think um, and believe and, and act, and, and, and then ultimately who we are. Um, so this is really a time on the planet, the, one of the greatest opportunities to step into our power. And we each have a unique path to that and, and a unique way of relationship with that. Um, but everything that you shared with us, Gwen, is so powerful and, and, and simple, uh, which is what we want. We don't want overcomplicated um, tools and techniques um, on a daily basis. You know, there's lots of deep philosophy we can all engage in um, that is certainly beneficial. But on a day-to-day -day basis, we really, we really want to stay um, centered, connected, and conscious so that we can uh, use this time on the planet um, for our own personal growth and evolution. And exactly as you said, to be able to relieve stress, to be able to um, deflect anxiety, you know, or what I call discerning and deflecting external stressors. Um, so your tools are magnificent. And I encourage everyone here to work with Gwen and participate um, in everything that she does. She's a phenomenal healer um, and, and luminary leader. Um, and we're just so honored that, that Gwen is sharing all of this with us today. So don't hesitate if you have any comments or questions for Gwen. Um, now's the time. Um, anything that you want to discuss at all? We still have 20 minutes, so we don't want to be, um, you know, totally controlled by time. <laughs> um, but we have some flexibility. So feel free to share or just have some thoughts or if you want support in something that you're going through, um, feel free to share with the group. Anyone want to jump in? Gwen? I could also do um, a clearing for someone if, if somebody wants to jump up and sure and, you know wants to, to volunteer and, and we could go through a quick clearing process. That'd be awesome. Who wants to jump into that? This great opportunity. And you don't have to share a lot, just you know yeah. what it is. So if it's um so we just cleared a lot of anxiety. So so say maybe there's um some shame and you don't have to talk about what it is, just that there's shame and on a scale of zero to ten, ten being the most, zero being none at all you know, how much is there? And then we'll do a really quick process to clear it and, and, and then check and see how much has come down, moved. And, and so go through the process like that. I think Carol wanted to jump in. Carol? Yeah, hi. Can you hear me, Carol? I can hear hi. you, Carol. So great that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. I'm outside walking, which is probably not great, but um, I couldn't let the opportunity go. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I, I love that you participate. What, what can we help, with you, help you with today? Um, I just kind of noticed today um, that I, I think one of my habits is that I self-sabotage by focusing all my energy on other people rather than kind of, um, you know, if I get enthusiastic about anything. I seem to always go back to what's wrong. Like say my, I have a neighbor that's quite a, um, you know, problem for me. And I always bring it back to them. And I think I'm self-sabotaging with this kind of pattern, you know? Um, and I, I, I'm afraid yeah. to kind of commit back into my own um, power maybe, or something mm -hmm. like that. I so, don't know, so, that's what it feels so, like. So would you say that this is blame? Is blame the thing that you're dealing with right now? Blame? blame because yes, you're because you're yeah because you're blaming the neighbor instead of taking responsibility yeah and i think it might be though um because that's underneath the self-sabotage i think it might be a lack of self-worth that i might not value course. myself enough to follow <laughs> through on positive things so i go backwards to somebody else it's Absolutely. kind of like a, a a loop 
that I, I I'm you know yeah okay <laughs> so so there's blame in there there's um not taking responsibility and so let's clear the lack of self-worth and see how how you are on the other pieces so um on a scale of zero to 10, with 10 being the least, oh, yeah, this one's this one's tricky because um, the least amount of worth that you have for yourself and zero being that you have worth for yourself, that's kind of, let, let's, let's switch it. So zero means you have no self-worth and 10 means you feel full of self-worth. Where are you at on that scale right now? Right now, probably not too bad today, actually. Um, I'm probably about six, maybe. You know, I'm not, I'm not low, low, <laughs> you know? Okay. So yeah. say um, lack of self-worth, you can leave now four times. Out loud. Let's hear you. These are decrees. You have to decree them. Lack of self-worth, okay. you can leave now. Lack of self-worth, 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 you can leave now. Okay, go ahead and check. So where's the self-worth now? Was it six? Where's it now? Um, now, the funny thing is I can't tell that. Um, <laughs> That's why I wanted to go with blame. blame. Blame is easier for this. Because self-worth is, is there are so many different pieces to self-worth and we've done some one-on-one -on -one work together. And I know that, you know, our past will continue um, yeah. as, as you continue yeah. um, getting into more self-worth and clearing the, uh, may I share a little bit about our, la our last session? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Carol came to me feeling like there was, um, and, and I'll be, yeah, we're going to need to wrap up really quick here, Carol. Um, that she felt like there were all things stuck to her and, and was really feeling really, really icky. And what I saw in her field instead was the most gold, a literal lit river of gold in her energy field, that there is so much gold in, in her being that has been for generations and in many different lives been pushed down to protect her. So this is an individual who has an extraordinary amount to give to the world and to herself and has been pushed down. And so it was, it was a, it was, it was a surprise to both of us because I thought I was going to be clearing entities and taking off shackles. And instead it was just like, let's just bring in the gold. <laughs> so I'm going to have to wrap up with you on that, Carol. Um, definitely come on Tuesday if you can. I know it's midnight for you there. I, I noticed, I mean, real quick, Judith, you said that you feel guilty about being anxiety free. Do we have time to do like one more? Yes. Okay. Judith, would you like to come? Um, okay. To, for, you were separated from a 30 year narcissist. Oh, boy, polar. Oh, yeah. On your own health, good and happiness. You hike daily on property you reside on. You live in a. Um, a rebuilt garage that's never, and you've never been happier. Yay. You're living tiny. I love that. I'm, I'm, that's, that's bigger than I was living in recently. I, I love tiny, tiny living. Um, so do you, would you like to come on? Would you like to unmute and, and, and come on for just like a minute or two with that? And we can just clear up this guilt. Yes, I'm here. Yes, Wonderful. I'm here. I'm so, here. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. So on a scale of zero to 10 with 10 being the most guilt and zero being none at all, where do where are you at in in that? It's pretty high because everyone is so unhappy and uh, anxiety riddled that I feel terrible telling everyone how happy I have been in the last few years. Okay, so can just give me a quick oh. note. I can hear you. You're breaking up a little bit. Just give me a quick number because we need to get back to. Um, to, to Lydia and, and the Reiki session. And so. Well, about, about a nine. Okay. So, so nine times, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and say it with you. So nine times guilt and is it guilt or guilty? I feel guilt when, feel guilt. Uh, okay. when someone uh, tells me about our 
Okay, so I'm, I'm actually going to say this for you. So usually I would have you say it. You can say it as well. But guilty or guilt, guilt you can leave now. 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 Go ahead and check on the scale of zero to ten. Where is your guilt now? Wow, I literally felt a draining out of my body. So it's probably down to a two or a three. Are you good with hanging out there with a two or a three? And maybe we can talk about it off of the call. Uh, absolutely. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Judith. So that's how quick the decrees can work. One, one of the many tools in my tool shed of over 35 years of, of <laughs> training experience, a constant learner and, and, and healer. Lydia, I, I return it to you. <laughs> Well, thank you, Gwen. It was just um, amazing watching that. So thank you for everyone who, who volunteered. And it's always great to, to see something in action, you know, and, and experience it individually and, and as a group. Um, and it's very common, you know, as Judith was saying that for empaths and light workers uh, to kind of feel guilty that you're happy. <laughs> and, and I've been through that myself. Um, I understand that. And part of, I mean, part of us all reclaiming our power um, and then in doing so, regaining our energy, our, our, our strong, sustainable energy um, is to just accept, you know, where other people are at. And the, the stronger and happier and more whole we are individually, that radiates out to help those who are at whatever place they are on their journey. Um, so I just learned to accept that that's where others are. And, and it's okay, it's not only okay for me to be happy um, and feel good from within, uh, but it's also important because I always say energy never lies. You can't fool mother nature. So as our energy radiates out subconsciously, then it supports others wherever they are on their path. Um, so I'm sure we could have a three hour masterclass on all of these wonderful topics with Gwen. Um, but let's now move into our meditation uh, with, with Richard. Um, and so what we do uh, um, in our conscious leader circle for those who are new today is we end the session. Um, I send a long distance Reiki sending to the group. Um, and uh, Richard does a guided meditation at the same time. So you're receiving the benefits of both the guided meditation and the long distance Reiki um, to help always, as I say, you know, to, to release the stress and anxiety, uh, to help you return to your center um, and, um, and to go forward after the session today, feeling some relief and some deeper connection. So uh, Richard, I'll um, hand it over to you and we will start the guided meditation. And we could go for probably a good seven minutes or so. Um, and I will start the long distance Reiki. So Richard, take it away. All right. <clears throat> so what came to me today was just to take a little journey from heaven to earth, essentially, that will start, which is basically the seven chakras. And we're gonna go downward um from heaven so we go into the top of the head to that place of infinite energy whose nature is bliss which is beyond birth and death beyond all the changes it's the clay out of which everything is made and so all we're asking here is to just feel the process and let the realizations if there are any just happen as they happen and so we start with this infinite energy that is our consciousness, our very consciousness, the place from which we experience everything. But everything changes except this. This is the ocean. This is the pure beingness of our being and all being. This is the oneness. And this is the top of our being. This is heaven coming down into form as we came down into form. And so we allow ourselves to bathe in that world of pure being where there's no obligations, no coming and going, just the one radiant isness right here forever, timeless, omnipresent, our true being. And then we go down to the third eye between the two, eye, between the eyebrows. And we allow ourselves to see the big picture of our lives, to have 
constant access to knowing, to perfect guidance that can get us into or out of any situation. When, so that if we feel like things aren't quite working, we can go back to that perfect intelligence, which has that perfect knowing, that perfect understanding of what's happening and the perfect knowing of what needs to happen, which could be nothing. It could be sit still, it could be move. So we give thanks for that vibrating isness and we give thanks for that knowing. And we allow that knowing to be a gift as the bliss is a gift. It's not earned, it's in our nature. We already have it. We already have these two abundances. And from this knowing, we slip down into the throat chakra, into the place of creation, the creating of time and space, the creating of the story in which our body plays, and to begin to open to that we are already in the perfect story. It has its ups and its downs. Sometimes the ball goes in the basket, sometimes it misses, but it's all perfect the way it is, just the way it is. And so we begin to open ourselves to knowing the story that we're in and to knowing ourselves as creator. What is it deep down inside? What is it? we really want to manifest is not so much a knowing and not so much a deciding, it's a knowing of our nature as divine beings, as creators, as poets and artists of this life. What is that place of pure creation? Not coping, not getting by, creation, authorship, inventing, and then living in the story that we invented even before we were born and remembering to return to that place of creation, of speaking our truth, of singing our song, of dancing our dance, of feeling that gorgeousness, of fully putting out here our authentic, musical, gorgeous, perfect, unique self. And then we drop down from that into the heart, into that which is incarnate, and yet it's also pure love. And we allow the wounds of the heart to come up and come out. And we allow that right in the center of our being, we can go back here again and again and just feel our isness. Only this isness is incarnate. This isness has a body to play with, to be in. And we can just stand in that body, you know, in the bank line or the traffic jam and just be that light in a body radiating right now. And from that place of pure being, we drop down even further below the rib cage, solar plexus, into the place of power, the place of will, the place of courage, the place of destiny, the place where we take stands. I'm learning this. I'm committing to being with that person. I'm walking out. I'm shifting vocations. I'm studying this. I love that movie. To find that place where we commit our will and destiny happens out of the consistent committing of will to experience ourselves as powerful. And everybody's powerful. If you get out of bed, you're powerful. <laughs> Even if you stay in bed and think nice thoughts, you're powerful. Even if you think bad thoughts, you're powerful. And to accept ourselves as pure power. We can't get around it. We are pure power. And to feel that dignity, that self-worth, that stand that we take where we step forward into life and we just say, this is my will. This is what I am committed to because I choose it and I can unchoose it anytime I want. This is my heroism. This is my heroic role. This is my destiny because I give in to what that gut level wisdom is telling me I am about and where I'm going because I say so. And then we go down one more into the lower belly, go down into the erotic chakra, not just sexual, but the, the sense of beauty, the sense of magic, the sense of deliciousness, the sense of choosing the food we want and the people we enjoy and remembering to delight, to delight 
and we allow ourselves to merge into that delight muscle, which is always there, independent of circumstance, even with dark humor, even with a good blues song, no matter how high or low we are, we always have that ability to find the beauty in whatever the emotion, whatever the situation. We have that ability to radiate the charm, the aesthetic taste, the sense of somewhere in here is the magic. And I am the magic. And I am the beauty. I am the song. And to feel and align with the song in others. And from there, we drop down to the very base of our torso. We drop down to that place of true rootedness, connection to earth, the survival of the body, and the sense of where we are rooted. What sustains us physically? Where do we belong? Where are we grounded? What brings heaven all the way to earth? And it'll come and go, but we have the ability to continually come back and root that light in physicality and to feel where we belong and where we don't, where, when to come and when to go, and to really feel and complete that gut wisdom that brings all that spirit down into animal body, into physical form, into nature and our place in nature. And we celebrate our incarnation. We've chosen to be here for a while, to be and bring that light and to bring the deliciousness of our unique song and to bring our heart and to bring it all down into this beautiful animal incarnation, our brotherhood and sisterhood with all of nature right here on earth as it is in heaven. Praise be. Now we'll take that deep breath. Thank you, Richard. We'll just slowly return. We'll do the natural breathing now that we learned from Gwen. <laughs> Okay, so we're all back. And that was beautiful, Richard. Um, I didn't introduce Richard. Richard is a free will astrologer um, who is a phenomenal um, astrologer and guide. And uh, of course, I encourage everyone here to have some uh, healing and sessions with, with Richard, of course, as well uh, with Gwen. Um, and they're just, there's so much help out there for us um, at this time. And it's great to all uh, connect and create a network of, of love and light and support for each other. So any, um, any, any last minute uh, questions? Anybody that wants to stay later, um, you're welcome to. Sometimes I, I hang out and, um, and, we, um, and we just have some nice chats. So I make myself available. Uh, but I honor everybody's time. Um, so if you if you have to leave, absolutely. Um, thank you so much. Thank you everyone uh, for joining us at the Conscious Leader Circle this month. And um, we're all here to support you. And uh, today, myself, Gwen, and Richard are here to support you with what I call help, health, energy, and lasting power. And power was certainly a theme uh, uh, today of feeling okay, um, that it's okay to feel powerful. It's okay to feel happy. Um, it's okay to feel a relief of the burdens of the world and then shine our light as, as empaths and, and light workers. Um, so any questions, any comments, anyone wanna hang out uh, with whoever wants to hang out <laughs> with? <laughs> Hi, Yana. I'm happy to stick around for a little while and answer any questions if people Thank have them. Thank you for joining us, Yana. Hi, Yana. Teresa, did you have any comments? Teresa's on the phone with us. Uh, well, actually, one thing came to mind in terms of anxiety. Sorry, um, can everyone hear? Okay, okay, good. All okay. right, everyone can hear you, Teresa. 
Yeah. Okay, this is rather personal, but I want to share it because this is all, I'm sure, part of our human journey in different, um, has different phases. I was journeying there a lot uh, in my book, you know, connecting to the root of my own anxiety and how it kind of permeates. We know what that is. Anyway, that's my risk. <laughs> and yeah, astrology helps. Absolutely. You know. But and again, uh, when I do a reading, I always say, don't believe me. Just let it take you on a voyage. And then you own what you get. I'm just here to trigger it. I'm, I'm here to trigger your genius. Your knowing of who you are and why you came here. Even why. It's, why is it funny? Well, why, and why not at a, not at a figure out level? But in a what is my song? What can I stand behind? What is most me? Me in not the ego level, but me, because ego is a, is, a, is a masquerade. It's a substitute for being rooted in your, your song that is beyond vanity, beyond having anything to prove. It's just, guys, here goes nothing. I'm coming out and dancing. I don't know where it's going, but it feels like me. This is the best I got. And to me, that's where intimacy occurs, because if nobody bees themselves, how are you going to be close to anybody? And so this, astrology for me is out of context intimacy. I'm, I'm talking to a total stranger as if I know them. And if I don't have the courage, it takes courage to do that. Just stick, stick your neck out and go, I think I know something about you. <laughs> I never met you, but I know something about you. You know, and that knowing comes from another place than the intellect. It, you know, it uses the intellect, but it's beyond. It's another level of intelligence. Well, I can say, and um, and many friends and clients uh, would would agree with me that Richard is um, what kind of, <laughs> is a master at that, right? And um, if you have readings with Richard, he um, has a higher dimensional connection to the chart and um, and shares that uh, with you um, in in his in his readings and in his healing work. So. Uh, Richard's been a great guide for me for how many years, Richard? 20 something? I think the late 90s somewhere we met. Somewhere, you know, yeah. Yeah. I knew you were something special. Yeah. He's really phenomenal. Um, so so yeah, everything that he's discussing, I've experienced with him. And so many of my colleagues and friends and clients have had transformative experiences from exactly uh, what Richard is sharing with you and through his, through his astrology and his healing work. Um, and we can all connect with that. You know, we're all, um, as we were saying earlier, um, you know, a different, it's not that we're at higher or lower levels in our journey. We're just having different experiences. Um, and I had, um, when I was in my deep healing, I had a lot of dreams. So that was in my Saturn return in my, when I was around 29, which I didn't know was a Saturn return and, and my whole life transformed in at that time. But I had, I had dreams about past lives that were very clear and I wasn't particularly interested in past lives. I wasn't interested in spiritual development. I just wanted to get my physical body better and go back to my policy work. That was really my goal. <laughs> It seems so boring now. That that goal seems so boring now. <laughs> but the journey to accomplish that uh, had to be very deep um, in order to um, um, uh, and like it had to be in order to achieve that goal. I had to go very deep uh, because of the because of the depth of my condition. And then that awakened um, a whole other dimensional experience for me. That's how I got into, into the healing arts. But it's really quite amazing when you have a knowing of some of your past lives and you just witness them, you observe them. Like I, I watched myself in my past lives and then I watched my, uh, my death or my birth, you know, into the spirit world. And whether it was, you know, I was being shot um, or executed, I had a couple of those. <laughs> Um, I, um, I just said, as I was leaving my body, I just said, Oh, you know, they just shot me time for me to leave. And my spirit just, you know, left my body and off I went. Um, and you know, so I've had those, I've had some past life experiences, um, that do, um, that do help make sense of some of my life now, um, one might say um as 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 richard was saying so 
Um, there's a time and a place for everything, right? <laughs> Go ahead, Richard. <laughs> for me, in a way, astrology is a kind of worship. You know, I'm looking to find the miracle of that person and to honor uh, that miracle with my song. And, it, and so it's, it's a very much a heart journey for me. And it's, and it's almost always feels, I mean, a lot of times it feels impossible. I'm like, oh God, give them their money back, you know? Uh, and, but, I, but I just persist, you know, until ah, I got it, you know, and then turn on the mic. You know? but, but it is a treasure hunt in a way. You know, who is this person really? Mm -hmm. and what an amazing gift i mean to to have someone um bring awareness to you about that uh just through channeling right and knowledge obviously of, of astrology richard has but um and there's a time and a place as i said there's a time and a place for everything there's no right or wrong um in anything but anybody else have anything they want to share uh discuss we're in our we're in our after session chat <laughs> are you leaving gwen i'd love to stay yeah I'd, I'd love to stay longer but i i, I do have a, another appointment so I, it was such you, it, it was really great meeting you richard i i love your energy and and what you're saying about how you bring your song to astrology it's different than anything i've ever heard before it mm -hmm. sounds really extraordinary and thank you so much for inviting me lydia well thank you gwen it's just been uh, uh tremendously powerful and beautiful having you with us Thank you. Janet, thanks for showing up. Carol, thanks for showing up. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Nice, Bye. nice to meet you all. Bye. Okay, anybody else have anything that they want to discuss? Um, it's it's a free-for-all. Oh, yeah. Here. Martin wants to talk. Oh, hi, Martin. Your 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 arm, your hand is up. My arm, yeah, my hands, that means uh you're next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, what it means. Uh, yeah, I just res what you were saying actually resonated with something that. Uh... <laughs>